Hey there. Guess who just spent an ungodly amount of time on Projecto Sekai Hatsune Miku Karafu's Daisy? Me. It's me. And you. You're coming along with me as I take you through the ultimate free-to-play Project Sekai tiering experience. But first, let's pull. So, I've been saving up for this banner, as you can see. This is definitely one of my favorite sets so far. Look at this little guy. I'm a dragon Oshi. He just like me for real. Honestly, tearing for this event was a kind of sporadic decision. My plan going into this was just if get all rate ups in 200 pulls, I tear. If no get all rate ups in 200 pulls, I still tear, but just not as much. Probably T1000, I guess. Fortunately, my luck wasn't abysmal, and I managed to snatch up the whole set in 190 pulls, eight four stars, with five being rate ups. Besides almost having to spark for Dui, I'm pretty happy with this. These Kaito dupes came in clutch for card mastery. Kaito the goat, thank you for feeding Rui and Meiko. Now behold, I present to you my 331% event bonus team. This bad boy, or should I say bad dog, <laughs> earned me 3 to almost 3.5k points per 5 energy co-op match. This could be higher if you have more talent, but it's good enough for tiering already. Especially since I wasn't aiming too high to begin with. I settled for T500 since for T100 or higher, I'd suggest getting the colorful plus deluxe. You're going to need that bonus energy and autoplay upgrade if you still want sleep and functioning hands. And if you're getting this, it's only really worth it if you're also getting the monthly pass. But like, ew, what is that? This fit just ain't it. This is THE reason I didn't go for T100. And also not being ready for commitment. But it's mostly this. Still, why T500? Okay, hear me out. T500 is like the sweet spot of tiering. This is where the rewards are most worth it, in my opinion. First of all, even if you aim higher, the title looks essentially the same, and the rewards don't change until T100. Secondly, more importantly, you don't need to sell your soul to Miku to get here. My tiering schedule looked something like this for the most part. I'll go into more detail later on in the video. Well, if you go for T100, It'll probably look something like this. Do keep in mind that this varies depending on the event characters or event type. Generally, cheerful carnivals aka co-op events aka limited banner events are more competitive with less control over the amount of time you play. Or, a Wonderland Showtime event will be more competitive than a Leo Need event. If you're playing for multiple hours at a time, I'd recommend joining a tiering server where you can ping for help. It saves you a lot of time and maybe some sanity too. I played solo and on average, I had a ratio of about 2 disbands per match, which equals 2. You'll need more patience. And to the people disconnecting because of the song, listen bro, I don't want to play Barajikudoro Benzin for the third time in a row either. But this is the risk if you're choosing to play co-op, okay? Alright, good. Let's move on to a quick event point guide. Your team is very important, since it's the base for the amount of event points you earn. The order of team building priority will always be banner card over 50% bonus 4 star over birthday card over 3 star over the 2 star over the 1 star and then over the lower percentage cards. Well actually, there's an exception to this. 10% event bonus is equivalent to around 10k talent. So, if you have a 35% or up bonus 4 star, it would be better than a 50% bonus 2 star. Especially if this is what gets you into pro co-op rooms. You should have a bare minimum of 150k talent and 250% event bonus for your tiering team. Any lower and you won't be having a good time. Card mastery will boost your points by a ton if you have the resources for it. Without mastery, my event bonus would be 285%, which is a whole 46% difference. Here's the trick. 3 stars and under give a uniform amount of event bonus to mastery, while it's different for 4 stars and birthday cards. Mastery 1 gives 10% and 5% respectively. 
1% for mastery 2, 3, 4, and 2% for mastery 5. So try to get all the 4 stars in your team to mastery 1 first. But if there's a hairstyle or costume variant you really want, just go for it. 10% isn't going to ruin your run, but if this is how your mastery ranks look, it might. Also, if you're watching this after 3rd anniversary, the mastery bonus for 4 stars and birthday cards will have changed. As for talent, other than leveling your cards, the biggest part is to level up plants and decorations. Side stories, mastery, and character ranks also give a decent boost. Now that you have your team, how should you play to max out your point earning? So here's the basic. Co-op versus solo lives, personal score and team score, song, combo, and bonus energy consumption. Co-op earns you around twice the amount of points solo lives do for cheerful carnivals and around 1.7 times during marathons. But if your Wi-Fi looking like this, play solo. Speaking of playing solo, solo score versus team score tends to get overlooked. I had an event team with a solo score of S, which still resulted in an average team score of B in general rooms, while in pro rooms you're guaranteed at least a team score of A. So for the exact same song, I was earning about 1 to 2,000 more event points in pro rooms. Although this doesn't sound like much, it does add up when you're playing hundreds of matches over the course of an event. Keep in mind this is just a solo player worry. If you play with others in a tiering server, this shouldn't be a problem. You're probably going to have to see the pro gamer words though, such as ISV, Filler, Encore, and Ebby Jail. Next up is songs. While in cheerful carnivals, it's all random and you play what you get. In marathons, you get to choose, but so do other people. But on the occasion your song does get chosen, here's a few meta songs. Lost and Found and Melt are most common for point maxing, while Hitorimbo Envy and Viva Happy are for efficiency. Well, just kidding, solo players, if you choose these songs, there's a high chance of disbanding. So either try some of these alternatives or join a tiering server. While combos don't affect event points as much, unless you're missing like 150 notes and get more grades than perfects. Even though there is essentially no difference between APing an expert song or missing a few notes on the master, it's still better to choose a difficulty where you're more consistently able to full combo on. So I suggest choosing difficulty based on this. Master full combo over expert full combo over hard full combo over no full combo but maintaining fever combo over normal full combo over easy full combo over no full combo not being able to maintain fever combo over dying. So for me, I didn't really play anything with a difficulty of 28 or more while tearing. But even still, there were times I zoned out or was just having a bad day where I couldn't full combo songs I usually would have. And let's not even get started on lag or notes not registering. So don't stress over this too much. On another note, combo ties into two other small point boosts, Super Fever and Survival. Fever is a small duration of a song in multi-live where the screen darkens and ends with giant words and sparkles on your screen. There's two outcomes from this. Fever, which happens when one or more people break combo during the fever duration. Or Super Fever, in which no one breaks combo during the fever duration. Super Fever gives a team score boost while Fever does not. As for survival, just keep your HP above zero and you'll get a score boost as well. I'm once again recommending you to play in pro rooms if you're consistent with these, since you're about 5 times more likely to get super fever and not have player die on harder songs there. Finally, we've arrived to the last point, energy consumption. Day 1 is really the only day you should be using 3 bonus energy per match if you're tiering in the hundreds range or higher. All the other days, you should use 5. Though in desperate times, or if you have a lot of resources you can burn, you should crank it up to 7 or 10. And pay attention to end dash, especially during the last 6 hours. If they catch you slacking, you're getting booted out whatever rank you're tiering for. And I mean it 100%, 1000%. Oh, and don't forget to watch ads. All this good food. <sighs> 
А еп, а яп, а япт. 5,000 likes and I'll T50 and stream it. Also, if there's anything important I missed, please point it out in the comments. So I uh, missed Start Dash by like 5 hours and only had enough mats to level my team up to 160k talent. Which is fine, I, I can catch up. I couldn't catch up. After 3 hours of tiering or 32 3 bonus energy matches, I sat at T866 with around 690k points. With 5 drink S used. Also use 10 energy for 10 autoplays to test some songs. Here's the rankings. There's probably better alternatives though, but this is just what I have so far. Nothing much happened this day, besides disbanding 7 times in a row before getting to play a match. Day 2 was the day I played the most besides the final day, clocking in at 3.5 hours, or 35 3 energy matches, 7 5 energy matches, and 1 2 energy match. You could probably tell this is when I realized 3 energy was not getting me enough points. Ignore the 2 energy though, that was a mistake. Moved up quite a bit this day and got to T698 after earning 1 million-ish points. Used up 32 drink S and 1 drink L. Honestly, I kinda didn't want to play this day. Yeah, already. But I couldn't afford to chill after seeing that I dropped to T960 overnight. Ended up playing about 2 hours or 26 5 energy matches and 2 3 energy matches, which left me at T708 after earning 900k ish points. Used up another 32 drink S and 1 drink L. Got the MVP achievement, pretty good day. Babe, wake up. Yaminabe just dropped. You know I had to try it. Felt pretty confident since I'm sure my skill improved from playing so much the past. Anyways, I started this day at T871 and tiered for just over 3 hours, or 35 5 energy matches, putting me at T571 after earning 1.1 million points. Used 8 drink S and 7 drink L. AP'd another master, which made up for my Yaminabi fail. Another day, another tier. It's finally slowing down, so I don't need to start my day bordering on dropping into T1000. This day started at T633 and ended at T512 after around 2 hours of tiering, or 28 5 energy matches, earning another million points. Used 8 drink S and 4 drink L. Kind of embarrassing, I haven't even gotten into T500 yet and the event's half over already. Tell me, would you still love me if I play Project Sekai like this? So I started this day at T596 and tiered for a bit over 2 hours, or 29.5 energy matches, placing at T520, earned 950k points, used 6 drink S and 5 drink L. Oh, and something about the ads not playing, and I was mad about it. I don't know, it's in my notes. Fish and the chips? Mm. America. It's been a week of this already. Not that I can complain since I've been averaging a somewhat normal amount of time spent on Project Sekai, I think. Anyways, started at T585 and ended in T475 after 2 hours, or 27 5 energy matches. Earned 900k points, used 5 drink L. Finally in T500 though. Also this. Did I spend more time on this than I'd like that I should've spent tearing? Probably. No regrets though. Day 8 started at T549 and ended at T459. 2 hours of tearing or 27 5 energy matches with about 900k points earned. Used 4 energy S and 6 energy L. Day 9 started at T535, ended at T452. 
two hours again, or 28 five energy matches with almost 1 million points earned, used seven drink S and five drink L. Please, we're on to the final stretch. Like, actually, I was fighting for my life this day. Started at T552 and played my usual two hours. The 27 five energy matches didn't even get me back into T500. So for the last three hours of the event, I had to tear the whole time. I was so sweaty during all of this. Like every time we disbanded, my soul was screaming in agony. After 24 five energy matches and for some reason a three energy match, I was still moving back and forth on the border of T500, so I had no choice but to set my energy to 10 for my last 12 matches. I literally finished my final match with seconds to spare, and then it was over. I can finally rest now. And so, my never give up cooking tearing journey ends at T460. Here's a quick tip before I get into final stats. If you have a few minutes before the event ends and are bordering on the edge of an event placement cutoff, play another match with 10 energy. If you don't have enough time to wait out a co-op match, play solo. You just gotta get in this last match or you could be getting kicked out of your ranking. Even for me, being nowhere near the cutoff, I was at T452 seconds before event ranking calculations and still ended up at 460 for the final placing with 10.6 million points. Now here's the conclusion. I spent around 27 hours totaling to 341 matches during this 10 day event. My total items used were 118 drink S and 58 drink L. I went from level 57 to 102. New songs cleared during this time totaled to 81 experts and 15 masters, also APing 6 masters. Here is how much my character ranks increased. And finally, I got to 7,400 show points in 9 days of the event, which is the furthest I've ever gotten. Overall, I'd say T500 was definitely worth the time, and fairly easy to obtain. And looking back, I probably shouldn't have used all my mats for this team, since I definitely didn't need that amount of event bonus for only T500. Now I won't have anything to use to tier in the future. Don't be like me, save these resources for a leaderboard tier. I hope this was helpful, and good luck to all of you in your future tiers. See ya.